Creative Control is brought to you by FreshBooks, a ridiculously easy-to-use cloud accounting software for small business owners that saves you time and gets you paid faster. FreshBooks is now used by over 10 million people worldwide, and I want you to try it too. For your free 30-day trial, go to freshbooks.com slash creative control and enter creative control, that's creative with a K, control with a K, in their how did you hear about us section. Stay organized and get paid faster with FreshBooks. Are you hungry but don't know what to cook? HelloFresh Canada is here to help. Have a whole delicious meal's worth of wholesome ingredients plus a simple to follow recipe all delivered right to your Canadian home. There are vegetarian options and plans for single people and families too. I've tried this. It was great. Visit HelloFresh.ca for more information and menu options and use the promo code CREATIVE50. That's creative with a K. 50 for 50 percent off your first order walter schreifels is a talented and iconic singer guitarist songwriter and music producer based in new york city Likely best known for his work in punk and hardcore bands like Quicksand, Gorilla Biscuits, Youth of Today, and his own eclectic solo pursuits, Schreifels has been touring with his latest group, Dead Heavens, who just released their debut album. It's called Whatever Which You Are, it's out via Dine Alone Records, and it's a cool blast of psychedelic rock. Walter and I connected recently to discuss Dead Heavens, their new album, and also the return of Quicksand and the making of that band's first record in 22 years, Interiors, which is out November 10th on Epitaph Records. Sponsored by Fresh Books, Hello Fresh Canada, Pizza Trocadero, The Bookshelf, Planet Bean Coffee, and Granddad's Donuts, this is Walter Schreifels on the 364th episode of Creative Control with your host, me, Vish Khanna. Hi, Walter. How's it going? Hey, Vish. I'm good. Nice to have you on the show. Uh, thank you. Pleasure to be here. Now, where in the world are you as we're speaking? I am in Ottawa, Ontario, in the great country of Canada. Ah, that's the country I'm in, too. Ah, wonderful. <laughs> uh, how are things going for you in Canada? How long have you been in Canada? Uh, I guess it's been a week and change, maybe. Um, we were out on the... Uh, the East Coast, we were in Halifax, PEI, and uh, played in Sackville and uh, Fredericton, and uh, and then we were just in Quebec City and uh, Montreal, and today we are in Ottawa, and we got, I think, six more shows to go, so we're really doing it. Yeah, you are. You really are. Have you been through the Maritimes so ex- as extensively as this uh, in your past? Uh, I One time I did uh, some solo shows in the Maritimes, but it was, it's quite some time ago, so uh, it's great to be back, and I saw some uh, some old faces. It was really cool, and the weather was really just beautiful this last week. So oh, good. we've been we've been enjoying ourselves. Now, what do you make of Canada generally? I know you're in Canada. You want to be careful what you say. you're talking to a Canadian. You want to be careful what yeah. you say. But I, I, I just honestly, what is your perception as a uh, my my understanding is you are an American citizen. What do you make of mm-hmm. Canada? Oh well, there's there's you know so much to say about it. I mean this. You know, there's a lot of variety in it, actually, just going out east in the Maritimes and, you know, kind of getting into that part of it and, uh, you know, going through uh, Quebec and now in Ontario. I mean, each each uh, part's got a lot, you know, a lot to offer and, um, you know, a lot of natural beauty. And uh, I think people are, I mean, maybe it's a cliche, but people are just kind of generally very welcoming and uh, and cool. So, uh, you know, it, it, we're, we're just like really appreciating it and, uh, and digging it. Are you the type of person that wishes your own country was more like this country? Well, I would go for, I would take a chance with, uh, a new government, you know, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. but you know, America's awesome. America's got a lot of, a lot of cool stuff going on too, but I think Canada, um, 
it's not as uh, crazy as America is right now. So <laughs> I could use for a little chiller pace. I don't know that that's, you know, I haven't been here that long to, to pick up, but it just seems like people are a lot more anxious in the United States these days. So it's, it's a nice break from that. Do you, do you feel that yourself? Do you feel a sense of anxiety being an American right now? Uh, of course. Yeah. I yeah. mean, if you, that's, everyone's just kind of pissed off and fearful and, um, you know, of course, trying to just do their normal stuff, but uh, you know, everybody is just kind of yeah. There's just a lot of uh, darkness and anxiety and uh, you know divisiveness that uh, I think permeates the air, and uh, it just depends on how much you want to let into your life, you know, and uh, and also a lot of powerlessness because it is such a big country and the people that agree with each other tend to flock in the same areas. And so um, they can't really get a, a point of view or, or get across without it being sort of insulting to the other group of people. So I don't know. It's just a mess. I'm sure you hear about it enough. Oh, yeah, yeah we, do. we do. We do. We do. One thing I'm, I am curious about, because I've talked to a few people about this, do you have a particular way of coping with all of this? Uh, some people... You know, there's various forms of escapism to try to deal with something like this. Uh, some people retreat to music or film. You know, they just you, you figure out ways to deal. How, or satire even uh, yeah. is, is a big one. What about you? Do you have a particular way you cope with stuff like this? I guess I, I do a good job of limiting myself, of talking about it, thinking about it, and just kind of get into what I'm actually doing in my life Yeah. Uh, you know, without completely – checking out of it because the other thing is people are making money on freaking us out you know the the you know not to like vilify uh the media in some sort of cliched kind of way but you know anything that happens anything that trump says everybody's all over it and people click on it read about it so anything he does or you know any outrageous kind of claim back and forth it's just it behooves the people in, you know, whatever, all the different websites and yeah. media outlets to make the most out of it so that, you know, you you can display your outrage or the absurdity of it all and, you know, by making fun of it or whatever. But, um, you know, it's, it's just really feeding on itself. So I, I try to keep that in mind and, you know, really appreciate, like, especially being on tour here, being present, even if we're just sitting in a van, you know, silently like that's just cool to watch the 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 landscape go by it's a it's a nice zen retreat from it all yeah yeah maybe this explains the extensiveness of your current canadian tour uh yeah well i think the timing's all right you know (laughs) it's 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 working (laughs) well uh one of the ways uh i think some people could cope is by listening to a band like dead heavens i think oh cool Uh, thank you i think that's a good way to go and i i'm eager to talk about this record uh, at length with you. It's called Whatever Witch You Are, and witch, uh, for those who can't read it right now, is like a witch on a on a broom or w- what have you. You know, like a mm-hmm. like a witch, right? So I want to begin uh, before we get into the record. Can you explain where Dead Heavens came from, just to contextualize the band for people who might not be familiar with it? Yeah, um, I was doing some solo. I had a solo tour in in uh, in Europe, and uh, you know, a couple of my regular guys couldn't make it or I could only bring one regular guy or something. I don't know, whatever it was, the personnel got shifted up a little bit. So it ended up being, uh, me, Drew and, uh, Nathan who had never played with me before. And, um, the three of us just had such a great time on that tour and playing my solo material in that context. It just kind of got heavier Hmm. and we were, we were listening to a lot of cool music in the, in the car. And we just had a, a new sort of sensibility started to kind of come up. So, you know, after a while playing together, Paul started, uh, our guitar player started recording us. And then it started to feel like, oh, well, maybe this isn't just a solo thing anymore. Maybe it's just more of a band feeling. And uh, let's let's go down that route. And um, so, yeah, that's kind of how it took shape from more just my solo project. And, uh, you know, we have a great chemistry and we all get along and, and it's a lot of fun. I'm curious if that solitary pursuit has led you to sing differently because I I've been marveling at how I don't mean to overflatter you but the singing on here on this record is very gorgeous if I might say oh thank you Vish I like that <laughs> um, and I mean I, uh, yeah, yeah but it's, it's still a rock band after all 
yeah, I think, you know, having a different, uh, and also, you know, I've been doing, I, I'm interested in trying to do different things with my voice and, and, uh, you know, in this context, you know, I got, you know, people are kind of egging me on. So that, that's, uh, it, it's cool to have a new, yeah, a new kind of platform to, to try different stuff out and grow and, and, and do different stuff as, as a musician at this point, I think, you know, for anyone who's been following, like, that's kind of what I do. You know, I'm trying to like, I, I might get into something and it, and then I'll kind of want to change stylistically. And, uh, you know, this is a good, a good group of people to kind of do that with because everyone is, is very open. And as I said, like the chemistry is very good and I feel like it's, it's just, yeah, very wide open. Yeah. I think for those, like the first time I ever saw you play live, I was a big quicksand fan in oh. when, I, when I was like, uh, so I guess I would have been, 1995, I think you played the Warp Tour in Toronto. Mm -hmm, is, mm -hmm. that, is that right? Do you remember this? Yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah, that was a great one. That was out in, uh, I think it was in like uh, some sort of kind of stadium. Exhibition stadium. Thing. Exhibition yeah, stadium. Exhi yeah. Yeah, it's yeah where, that it's was where, cool. It's where the Blue Jays used to play before they had yes. the, the new thing. Yeah, that's right. So I was there and I saw Quicksand and I was a big Quicksand fan. And, you know, I think of you still in some ways as a shouter. And, and yet, as you <laughs> say, if people follow all your bands there is some and all your work there's some shouting still but you mm -hmm. you you seem to really be reveling in the, the the dynamic freedom you have right now to just go and like i mean when we get to i, I know there's a quicksand record coming but this yep. dead heavens experience is way different way different from surveillance or quicksand or anything like that it's it's quite interesting Ah, oh, thank you yeah i mean that's that's how i keep it interesting for myself and i definitely bring along the tricks and, and different things that I do, I think are there, but just maybe in different, in a different form. I mean, the people that I think are really great are, are doing that. Yeah. You know, the people, the artists that really kind of have long careers and, and do interesting stuff. I mean, maybe because you have, have to kind of, well, maybe not everyone does, but I, I think that um, it, it just kind of seems natural to want, want to take the things that you have, that you've learned and, you know, um, developed and apply them to, to different scenarios, different kind of uh, context. And, you know, that this is a uh, dead heavens is, is like, especially for my guitar playing as well as my vocals. Um, I've, I've definitely broken a lot of new ground, you mm. know, and, uh, it, and it makes it fun and makes it interesting. Are you possibly referencing someone like say Neil Young who oscillates between such worlds? Uh, yeah. Neil Young is, is, for sure. Uh, I mean, he's had a lot of different stages and, and, you know, but there's lots of people to point to. I mean, sure. you know, Bob, Bob Dylan would be another example, you know, like his voice, his the vocal delivery is, is different, you know, as you follow him from record to record, he's always changing his sound, you know, it, and a more extreme example would even be Bowie, you know, yeah, of course. from, yeah. from uh, you know, he's really changing not only you know, his kind of guise and appearance, but the music and, and his vocal approach is, is always changing. So, I mean, th those are the guys that you want to go after, but I, I don't know that it's like even about that for me. It's just like, I don't know. I get excited about something. I kind of do it. And then I'm like, fuck, I want to do something else. Yeah. My language, but you know, that's just yeah. kind of the, has been the, been the way. And, um, you know, and uh, so I, I'm very accepting of that at this point. I'm not fighting it. Yeah, it's not like willfully being a chameleon. It's just embracing mm -hmm. the mood and and the vibe mm -hmm. of what's in front of you. Yeah, yeah. I saw I saw four Bob Dylan shows over the past summer. Mm -hmm. So I like I like seeing him because it's always different. It's always I, it is. Yeah, I, are you? It, it you, is always different. Do you follow? Do you see him at all? Do you try to see him? I've seen him. Yeah, I've seen him many times, and it, and it is is always different. And you know, I've also seen him where he will perform. One of the most interesting is when I saw him play, and he just played a, a, a Wurlitzer piano for the whole set. Yeah. So you know, someone you look like at someone like him. I mean. He's always reinterpreting the songs is another thing. Mm -hmm. And I think he's been doing that for a long while. And I think, you know, for Bob Dylan, I mean, he's Bob Dylan. People probably to some degree, although they keep going to his shows, bum on the fact that they can't sing along with <laughs> all the hits. You know what I mean? But he, if he were, you know, I think nothing would be worse than everyone singing along to like, like a Rolling Stone or something. Uh, you know, singing along in a stadium. I think that would just be awful. So I, I, I think it's great that he still plays so often, and he and he does it on his own terms. Yeah, and uh, and that's something that I admire. And you know, without trying to like, 
I'm not trying to like make any statement or I don't feel like anyone's trying to control my path, but you know, I've been doing that in my own way, you know, like I've kind of just been doing stuff on my own terms and, and, uh, and I'm, I'm grateful to been lucky enough to kind of pull it off to, up into this point. Yeah, sure. you're, you're doing it, Walter. Don't sell yourself short. You're doing a great job. You're doing a fantastic ah, well, job, I think. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to begin uh, talking about this record. I, I, I suppose we should begin with the title, though. Whatever Witch You Are. I was trying, uh-huh. I kind of mangled an explanation of the yeah. title, but uh, what does that title connote for you? Oh, um, we uh, are the guy that does our artwork, Dusty Dirtweed, had had a a little caption on this one piece of artwork that he did with this guy talking to the girl. And uh, he's asking her, what kind of witch are you? And so we just went, whatever witch you are, you know, as as some sort of answer. I don't know. That's I I don't know if that makes any sense either. (laughs) But I guess the point if the idea of it is about, you know, just whoever you are is, is great. You know, be be that, and if it's you know the idea of throwing a witch in there, well, witches are kind of, I guess, scary in in some way to people, but it's only from people's power that it makes it that way. But I mean, it's not meant to be some you know deep message of of feminism or or anything like that. But that's kind of how I see it. I, I I like the idea of being accepted and accepting yourself. You know, and and uh, and that's what it says to me. That kind of speaks to what we were just talking about in terms of your expression. Of, of, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that, I think it's just like you get to live the one time and, um, you know, school can be awkward and, you know, you can second guess yourself a lot. But at some point you should hopefully sooner than later you go, hey, this is who I am. This is this is how I do and and uh, and be down with that. Yeah. Cause, uh, but I think that's a really, you know, it's a, it's a tricky thing and, and it's always – always work but um but anyway that's what i think of 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 the title is what it kind of means to me did but you, i did, you know yeah. I, I wouldn't write it write it for anybody else it could mean whatever did you have some kind of epiphany when it comes to this kind of thing it sounds like you went through some situation perhaps in your professional life where you felt pigeonholed and maybe realized it might be uh, an internal pressure like a pressure you're putting on yourself to live up to something a perception maybe <laughs> uh in some regard yeah i guess I, not not so recently maybe at one time but uh you know there's some some sort of thing but i think it's just like a natural kind of process you're coming up for me i was coming up in hardcore which i was really into and really loved and you know but that's a sort of i mean the name hardcore just kind of connotes this kind of aggressiveness you know so i kind of even with it, when i was in that i was kind of playing against that idea mm-hmm. um you know, with Gorilla Biscuits or Youth Today, where it's this it's supposed to be this nihilistic, you know, punk rock hardcore world, and you're playing against that type, right? Um, you know, and then all of a sudden, that su- is that you know, kind of you might succeed at that, and then you're that, and do you really want to be that? So you're kind of looking for these uh, maybe different definitions to kind of uh, wrap yourself in. And, you know, for me, after a while, I was kind of, I, I kind of feel like I'm all those things. And, and, uh, and, and I just kind of, I'm into whatever I'm following or whatever I'm, I'm feeling. I, I just don't judge it or worry about it too much. You yeah. Know? But, but I'm, I'm not immune to, to feeling like insecure or doubt or unsure. But I think I, my reset is like, hey, you know, you're not, you're not so bad and you're not, you know, you're not the best. You're not the worst. You're just like who you are. And, and if the more you're into that, I mean, it kind of sounds new agey, but it's kind of that's kind of how I I look at it. No, there, I, I think it's important uh, for you to convey these things and articulate them because I think as we go, one of the underlying concepts that I come across as I listen to these songs is this notion of freedom and what freedom means mm-hmm. uh, and liberation. So I, I, I think uh, kind of freedom of expression and, and just sort of yeah. feeling free within your own mm-hmm. life. So I think that's going to come up. Uh, let's begin uh, talking about this uh, record. There are nine songs. I want to begin with a kind of hazy instrumental called Rainbow of the Ohm Chart. Yes, yes. I like to hear like some musical kind of in you know the orchestra warming up. I always think that that's a cool effect. Oh, so I had the idea to have something, but not an orchestra necessarily. Like um, 
I wanted it to be just the sound of flutes because I heard a flute in the subway. Someone was playing flute. And I thought, that sounds really cool. And I wanted to just record it, but it wouldn't really make sense. So um, so we just kind of wanted to make an uh, something with flutes. And, and uh, so Nathan did most of that, actually, the bass player. Yeah. You know, it's kind of just set the tone for the record. And uh, Rainbow the Own Chart is uh, – there's some sort of musical, um, like, color wheel. And that that's an actual – an ohm chart is what – what it is um om homage i think is what it's about so it's not really like om uh like om shanti om it's no no it's the electrical om, it's an electrical thing yeah and uh and i think there's a color wheel to it like somehow and um so i don't know we thought that that was kind of trippy and interesting and for a title for a musical intro sort of like you know the curtains opening on something did you like that there could be confusion between the two ohms yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that's where they that's where the uh, you know the the in, inspiration was. But once you put it to that music and call it you know a rainbow, put that to it, its meaning changes. Yes. and that's the that's the fun of of you know that's part of the fun of doing these things. You know, is like the way that you do it, what you call it, and it, it just always the meaning changes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, I, it's short enough that I think we can move on to the uh, the first, or rather the next song, uh, which mm-hmm. is called Basic Cable. So A, mm-hmm. It's a love song. It seems to be a song about missing someone, perhaps. Can mm-hmm. you talk a little bit about the inspiration behind this one? Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, kind of just thinking like you're home, you're watching TV, Walking Dead or something like that, and just thinking about someone else and, you know, if, thinking about the person you're waiting for when they get home, the house is going to be clean. Um, are you going to have, <laughs> you know, done the things to, to uh, you know, make sure everything's going to be cool and, uh, you know, while you're waiting for them. But, you know, in that time, you're, you know, maybe just like watching TV. And, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the time, if I am alone and I'm watching TV, I'm working on songs and I'm just like watching something and something will just kind of come to me. And maybe that's how the song started to me. I, I don't really remember now, but hmm. it might have been, I could have just been sitting at home watching Walking Dead or something, waiting for, waiting for my wife to come home. But yeah, I, I think stylistically it was one of the first things that we did. And to me, it was, you know, the band we were listening, uh, you know, the tour that I told you about, we listened to a lot of My Bloody Valentine and uh, and a lot of Cream uh-huh. and uh, on that first tour we did together. And to me, there's a lot of that in that song, as well as like a sort of Sabbath-y kind of heaviness to it. But uh, but we were going for a, uh, a, a, a Cream kind of early blues rock kind of feel. Yeah, yeah, that that's certainly there, and there's definitely some Sabbath stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. It's very tenderly sung, as I as I said earlier. I think mm-hmm. uh, there's this there's this word that I think it's that you're repeating. Are you saying inside? Inside, yeah. Inside. Is it an oath? Watching t- Just because you're inside. TV. Yeah. I'm inside. <laughs> is, is this like some kind of lament for being inside, or are you do do you wish you were outside? Uh, a lot of time, I just kind of go with the music. You know, I'm kind of huh. just, I, you know, it's not like I necessarily feel, you know, with the amount of songs I've written, or you know, I don't feel necessarily like each one needs to have some sort of tight narrative or message that I need to put in people's heads in any specific way. Right. But, uh, you know, to me, that's what I'm thinking about, but it's fine. You know, in, in some ways it's not even, you know, thinking about what the song means to me or, you know, 
the idea is that it could mean more than I think, you know, or something else, you know, it could, it, it could mean, I, I could tell you what it's about and be wrong. Yeah, you know? no, no, totally. Yeah, no, I, and I appreciate that. I just, uh, yeah. I, I was struck by this repeated insight. It's almost haunting the way you're saying insight. It's like you're- yeah, I guess I want to fit with the music because the music has a haunting quality to it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, and I wanted with this band to be a little bit, you know, darker and scarier mm-hmm. in a way. Yeah. And so maybe that's part of it. Well, let's move on to the next song, which is called Away From The Speed, which has its own mm-hmm. sinister quality. It's more a beat. Mm-hmm. In the first mm-hmm. song. going for with this one i guess to have a little bit of fun you know it's kind of like a rock and sort of uh upbeat kind of like garagey band not garage band the program but the kind of music <laughs> uh uh kind of thing and um they did really so yeah, steal like, that they stole garage bands from us didn't they by naming yeah, that program that, yeah <laughs> yeah i guess you know you, you know you can't you can't cry or spill milk um <laughs> But yeah, it's just, you know, kind of a little bit more lightweight in, in a sense of like, uh, but yeah, again, it's a love song. It's just like, you know, someone that you're with that's maybe not good for you, you know? Yeah, and can't that, can't keep away from the speed is what you yeah, say. Uh, yeah. You're helpless. Yeah, you know, like, you know that this this person is just too much fun, you know, and, and it's like uh, that there's a danger to it. So, uh I think that that's kind of the vibe that I was going for with the lyrics and the music is just, yeah, trying to, you know, kind of, it's just something fun for us to play. It's pretty basic and, and, uh, kind of rock and rolly. Yeah. You, you say at one point, I know it's wrong and it's a, it's a very self-aware song that way. Is this drawn from your own personal experience? Have you been caught up in situations where you knew what you were doing was wrong, but it felt good? Uh, for sure. Yeah, of course. It's like, uh, I think that's a pretty normal thing to experience, you know, <laughs> shit. This is not cool. This is not where I should be. This is crazy. This is crazy. <laughs> and yet you are there. And uh, I mean, I think that's just, you know, that happens to people all the time. Yeah, you learn from it, I think. But you probably, uh-huh. have you done a thing where you've done that, you learned from it, but then done it again? Yeah. And then maybe it's, it'll take three more times before you decide, you know, Maybe I don't feel like, you know, after the the results maybe are in, you know, whether it's, you know, but I think there's lots of things that you could do that are maybe you have that realization and you come out of it with some new understanding that was totally worth the the risk, you know? Yeah. So uh, I think that's that's all right, too. You know, it doesn't always end in, it's not always like, uh, you know, the after school special where, you know, or Beverly Hills 90210 where if, if anyone takes a real risk, something really terrible happens, you know, it's like... Sometimes it just kind of works out, and uh, and you learn from it, and uh, you know, it could be a cool, cool thing to yeah. look back on. But I, I don't know. I'm just kind of riffing now. But uh, that that's the basic premise of the song. You're in a riff oriented band. It's okay for you to riff. <laughs> There's lots of riffs. It just seems like yeah. you get into yeah. you get into the dead heavens world. You're going to experience some riffing. That's just the way it it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of which, let's move on to the next song, "Bad Luck Child." talking about sort of rock and roll motifs and in, in the last song about this notion of 
doing something dangerous or wrong, but doing it just for the spirit of it. And this song seems to be imbued with that as well. This tried to raise you right, but it can't be done notion. You know, like someone is yeah. kind of a lost cause and they're bad. Who, who? Well, they're a bad luck child, I suppose. What inspired this one? I think it's just pe- a lot of people have bad stories about themselves, you know, that they that they tell themselves, you know, and um, I'm kind of dramatizing that a little bit, I guess. And, you know, the the truth is, is, you know, some people see their story as a bad story or that there's something just kind of wrong about them, but other people see them in a different light. And it's just like, what tor- story do you want to tell yourself? And, um, you know, some people think they're just awesome and they don't have any problem with self, but they should be a little bit, they should maybe reflect a little <laughs> bit more, you know? And so the story's about more about the, the, you know, the former. And sometimes you, you can't even penetrate that. You know what I mean? People see themselves in a certain way and there's just, you might see them differently, but there's just no changing it. It has to come from that person, you know? And so it's kind of a song about that. I mean, I mean lyrically and, uh, you know, musically, you know, we always thought this one kind of reminded us of uh, kind of the Rolling Stonesy, like uh, two thousand light years from home kind of groove, yeah. like uh, yeah. And um, so that it's fun playing in that kind of in that style a bit. Do you think? Um, I feel like a lot more comedy these days. It's always been a, a part of comedy, uh, but kind of making fun of the lack of self awareness of people uh, mm-hmm. is often the source of comedy now like just like yes. can you get over how this person isn't aware of how terrible they're being uh do you think that self-aware and then you've got your president who doesn't seem and a lot of his acolytes yeah. who don't seem terribly self-aware or even aware yeah. of their own hypocrisy are you do you think any of what's in the air you drew from that for a song like this one I don't know that I, I wouldn't have drawn from that really uh I mean it really just starts with the title like bad luck child. I mm-hmm. don't know. I, what well, I thought that was a, I think it's from a, another song that I thought I, I, I took it from, uh, someone else's like song. I forget oh, okay. what it was. Uh, and I just thought that was a cool idea of someone that was, was, uh, you know, just saw themselves as born under a bad sign or something like that. Yeah, you know what I, mean? I wasn't drawing that question necessarily from the song itself. It was more what you said, just this notion of like people having a perception of you that you don't have of yourself. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's it. You know, I mean, I think about stuff like that, you know, for sure. That, that, you know, I think of the of the self and especially, you know, I'm in these different bands and different songs and, you know, within each song you know you become a different person really yeah and yet yet you are still the same you know you're wearing the same clothes you're the same height you know you have the same family and you know background but within that the the context of that song you are playing this character and you're living in this story and so uh being self-aware i mean i think who any of us is 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 shifting and different like all day long you know what i mean and there's just you have a kind of operating system that generally takes in information and kind of rolls with it and you know when you i feel like when i hit kind of similar roadblocks or whatever bumps then i start to notice them i go "Mm, maybe i should maneuver differently this time and i think that's part of self-awareness absolutely uh, yeah you know yeah all of that informs who you are just yeah, make it, I, yeah. As much as you could ever know who you are, you know, I, I think that's that's the the trick is to me is that you know you're many different people. I think everyone is, you know, like you're 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 your friend, you're maybe a brother or you know a sister, a, a, a son, a, a, a parent, you know, yeah. a, a guy that work, uh, you know, a guy sitting next to you at the restaurant, you know. There's just like so many different types of people that you can be and still be yourself. And I I think that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, as a younger person involved in, I think because I come from a hardcore, post-hardcore punk background, Mm -hmm. I think in some ways that makes you kind of sensitive, but it also made me more defensive to criticism. And now as I get older, I feel like I internalize more criticism or at least I take it more seriously and Mm -hmm. try to improve myself. I don't know if you've had that experience. Yeah. I mean, it's, I don't like to be 
put in a position where I feel like someone's just criticizing me, but I think if it's cool, if it's a, if it's a friend or, um, you know, in, in an art, in a, in an artistic way, if there's a critique or a suggestion, I, I don't take it personally. I try, I, I can't because I, it, it's, no one likes to be told that they're not doing well, you know, sometimes it's cool to know, yeah, you know, and yeah. if, and if you don't agree, you don't agree. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, totally. And I think that's the thing, you know, if, if someone, you know, could be really helping you to say, you know, you're talking too loud <laughs> or, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know, or like <laughs> you should consider brushing your teeth, you know, it just depend how it's, it's being de- delivered to you and in what way, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, and then you say, okay, I get it. I've got bad breath, but you could be nicer about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> sure. So I don't know. It's all just so interesting being alive. It is. It is. And I don't mean to probe you mm-hmm. too, too much here, Walter. I just, yeah, yeah. I like to, you know, I like to see if these songs are little extensions of what's going oh, on. Oh, for sure. Inside. Yeah, of course. I mean, it, it, it it's uh, a lot of the time it's, it's, uh, you know, there's definitely there, there, you know, the lyrics are not necessarily pointing to, to things in specifics, yeah. As I said, but but there's definitely themes within them that that I th- I hope will be picked up on and and you know people will relate to. Yeah. Well, in, the, in their own lives. It's happening to me, I would say. Cool. So far. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to move on to the uh, next song. We're at, almost at the halfway point of the record already. I guess we're just mm-hmm. past it because there's a it's a nine song record. The moon will listen, but not the sun. Whoa. Hold away for the winter time Moon listen was on your mind I wanna say what you can't explain I wanna find a way to ease your pain Well, you got yeah. you got a problem with the sun. Oh, um, well, the sun <laughs> is always the sun is always like shiny and happy. It's got all kinds of stuff going on, and it's <laughs> you know people are out in the daytime. There's a lot more racket, and at night it's quiet. It's the moon's true. more patient. Yeah, it's true. Are you someone who does more work at night than you do during the day? Uh, I don't know that I do more or less. I mean, I guess when I'm on tour, I'm working depending on what you consider the work i mean i consider it all part of the same thing really like getting to the show and 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 the logistics of that and you know the hour that i'm on stage or depending on what band you know sometimes it's longer than that is the kind of funnest aspect of it or the but so i guess that's nighttime work yeah 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 totally i just wonder if you're creative impulse i'm someone who tends to i was a before i had children i was a more of a night owl i guess i still kind of am i'm fighting it uh, uh, that's what I mean. Yeah. Like I tend to. Oh yeah, get, I just kind of have to get in. I'm a father too, and I just get it in where where it fits in. Yeah. If, I, I, if, <laughs> if it's in the morning and I got time to myself, then I will get into it. Yeah, uh, you know, and I'm I, I'm always kind of thinking about, you know, when I have a free moment, I'm thinking about beyond like who I have to return an email or whatever that kind of logistical kind of work you know i get into some creative thoughts and i'll you know write a note or record a thought and um you know if there's a guitar around and no one's there and i have time i'll just play and see see what comes right there's a it's a this one uh the moon will listen but not the sun it's it's a mellow foreboding moody song i think uh Mm -hmm. you've got this recurring line that uh stuck with me maybe you know something i don't which has a kind, yeah. of, kind of dark quality to it um and, yeah. then, and then there's this heavy outro uh, with like a harmonized vocal riff, there's lots of interesting components to this song. But yeah, I, and I sorry for bombarding you with all of my information. Let's talk about yeah. this line. Maybe you know something I don't. What is that in reference to in the context of this song? 
Uh, I guess it's just injecting a little paranoia into the song. Hmm. You know, I guess this song is kind of about uh, the idea of, uh, yeah, I guess that's basically it. You know what I mean? That this the person that you're with is perhaps being unfaithful or something that could, could be that. You know, I, 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 I couldn't say ex- exactly like, what it specifically is yeah. but to me that's what the song is is kind of broadly about it's about you know that that sense of uh you know seasons changing and you know kind of addressing you know that there's some sort of you know issue that needs to be addressed yeah and uh you know when you said foreboding like that that's kind of the 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 feeling of it and at the end is kind of just like a release from that it's kind of just running for the fields you know and and letting that go um yeah there's foreboding there's euphoria it's interesting yeah yeah Yeah, cool yeah and and do you i don't know i I think some people would hear this and they might think uh they might categorize it as kind of psych rock how do you feel about Mm -hmm. something like that Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, that's how I think of, of it. You know, I mean, we yeah. were, when we started the band, I mean, the, the main influence was My Bloody Valentine and Cream, and right. to me, the Jimi Hendrix. You know, these are all psychedelic groups. You know, this, it, it's in Dead Heavens that I learned how to play uh, lead guitar, and uh, also how I got into um, using effects pedals. Yeah, and that's fascinating because I think there are certain tenets of psych rock that are they're, they're intriguing to me because there's the kind of expanding your mind stuff, which could be mm-hmm. as something as simple as I tried playing lead guitar <laughs> for the first yeah. time. Uh, but yeah. there's also the darker aspects of the mind and life, and it's uh-huh. it's a fascinating like everything's kind of colorful and cool but it's also spooky and weird you know it's, yeah because it's unknown yes. so I, I think you know that's 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 the thing i mean if it's i mean i'm definitely not like advocate i'm more in a, into it in a in a stylistic sense and the kind of music that was being made that became known as psych rock to me is just interesting because it's playing with this sort of color palette and and world of of possibility and in some ways that's you know yeah you're playing with the unknown the unknown is scary and uh but also the unknown is well there's beauty there too yeah. you know that's where possibility is and so um i i just i like that i i mean i'm not like touting it as like the best kind of music but i mean within dead heavens it's like i've always been attracted to that you mm-hmm. know and this is this is uh and i feel like you know through most of i think even gorilla biscuits is psychedelic you know it's, it's you know there's a harmonica solo on it you know i think that that's just taking something that's not expected and and putting it in a different context you know uh, that tension and uh so yeah i think that that's especially in Luma listen that's a, that's a that it definitely applies yeah well speaking of the mind and the places the mind can go we move on to the next song which is called Adderall Highway <laughs> You know, we were talking earlier about uh, industries that are doing well in the current climate. Uh, you mentioned the media. I kind of think pharmaceuticals must be doing well. Oh, they're of, rocking. Because of all the anxiety and whatnot. Uh, what, what would you want to say about Adderall Highway? I, I'm think, I, I bring this up because Adderall is a, a drug uh, that people yeah. take, I think, primarily for attention deficit disorders, right? Yeah, and to party. So I think it's, I mean, it's given to children and... Uh you know, and it's also, it's basically speed. Yes. So, uh, you know, it's just kind of getting into a, a speed mind and, and, uh, and it's just kind of, uh, you know, it's not any, any big statement on the pharmaceutical industry, but I do feel that it's, uh, you know, people are so drugged out on so many different levels and, and 
not on only on pharmaceuticals, but on social media, people are drugged out on, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so many different obsessions and, and, uh, you know, it, some of them are, you know, totally great and healthy and, and wonderful. But, um, you know, it's just also just in the same realm of just a, uh, you know, we're, we're also trying to just be like a rock and roll kind of, uh, psych band. And so I don't know, the title is just kind of, I guess, provocative in that way. Adderall is such a, um, a funny thing about it. I mean, not funny, like haha, -ha, but funny that, um, you know, parents give it to their kids. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's a, it's a parentally approved drug. Yeah. And yet it is speed, you know, <laughs> but I mean, you know, people are doing speed in the sixties too, you know, like, uh, so it's just a, a new branding of the same experience. People just want to stay awake so they can talk or finish a report or whatever. It's yeah. just the same shit in a new, new package. Right. So you are, but the song is fun. The song is fun, and you seem a little. You seem a little. You're trying to be careful not to suggest that any of your songs are particular commentaries on things. Is that? Am I? I'm, that's the vibe I'm picking up. Oh yeah, because I mean, if I it can. A, because I don't feel that way about it, but also because I, I wouldn't, you know, in talking by a track by track, it's like, as I said before, like I could tell you what I think the song is about yeah. and be wrong, you right. know, yeah. like, you know, it's like, what does the song mean t to the, the listener? And I think that's part of the magic. So, I mean, you know, obviously, like I want people to hook on to certain thoughts and ideas because that's what I'm hooking into. Yeah. But um, I, I don't know that I could accurately describe like what what it's about because it's just kind of coming to me sometimes very easily, and sometimes I have to like try a bunch of different things before it, it makes sense to me. And you know, you're you when I'm writing lyrics, you know, and so I'm coming up with a, a a language, you know, in a way, you know, it's it's not like it's not like a way that I would talk to a friend. So no, it's not, yeah, yeah. It, so it's not, it doesn't have those strict narratives. And, and, um, so I, sometimes I'm not really saying anything in particular. I, I'm more just trying to communicate. I'm trying to like plug into, I'm trying to connect to the song, to the music in a way that it makes sense to me. And yeah. then hopefully that kind of threads to other people and, and so they have their own experience. Right. Well, I appreciate you. I think in a roundabout way, you you, you said that the listeners of, of your music are magical, and I feel I feel flattered by that. I feel like a magical person now. Yeah, you got it. It's true. <laughs> no, I appreciate. You know? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. it's true. I'm, I'm trying to bring some stuff to the table here. We're going to move yeah. on. <laughs> We're moving on to the next song, uh, uh, "Gold Tooth." Yeah. Striking image. Gold teeth used to be all the rage. I don't think they are as much anymore. Maybe what? What? In, what to you inspired the song uh, Gold Tooth? Uh, I just thought the riff was really. I really like the riff a lot, and I thought um, someone has a gold tooth. It's just powerful. So I kind of was thinking of a guy that had a gold tooth, or you know, person had a gold tooth, and what kind of theme music they would have, and what kind of badass stuff they would do. Yeah, and and that's just kind of the feeling of, of the of the song and uh, the chorus is stay gold and just like keep doing what you're doing you know you're you got it right and that was you know it's kind of like a, a affirmation I would say I see okay so I mean there is a certain level of affluence I, I suppose one would require to, to to obtain a gold tooth maybe I don't yeah, know 
it's kind of ghetto affluence. That's you right. Know, like yeah, the truly affluent are are not getting gold teeth unless they're trying to like act street. You know, so. Right. Uh, uh, but it's more like just the idea that if you're confident and you got a gold tooth and you're just kind of strutting around town, it's just a badass way to be. And like <laughs> I, 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 I'm celebrating that. The song is eight minutes long. It's got a really huge jam part. Uh-huh. Uh huh. What what spurred that? It's, I think it's an anomaly in some ways. There's kind of this jammy atmosphere quality to a few of the other songs for sure. But like you're, yeah. you're actually stretching out here. Was that just? And in the moment thing, or were you were you consciously like we gotta we gotta let's let's do a, let's do something that stretches out a bit? Yeah, we wanted to to kind of have an imp, uh, an improvised kind of feel, so we just did a bunch of takes, and when one kind of took shape, we kind of um, cleaned it up a little bit, added a few things to to give it more of a story um, as an instrumental piece, and uh, you know, something that we've done live and we wanted to do our best to kind of capture that idea. And, you know, it's been, you know, a lot of bands I admire do that. I mean, Pink Floyd was definitely an influence on that. I really love on uh, the first record, Piper the Gates of Dawn. There's a couple of like long instrumental kind of uh, improv pieces that uh, I, I just think it's, you know, not everyone has the patience for it. But I think once you get into it, it's it's I, I just like that kind of stuff. So and I think we do it well. So. That, that's where we went with that. Did you come to some of these things like Floyd and Cream a bit later in life? Yeah, sure. I did. I mean, I like Cream because they were getting played on the radio uh, growing up, but I didn't really dig in deeply until very recently. Huh. I mean, I knew I knew Disraeli Gears as a kid, but, you know, digging into the, the rest of the catalog and Pink Floyd, uh, I discovered very late, um, especially the Sid Barrett. Pink Floyd, which is the what I really connected to. I mean, although I'm, I'm kind of into all of it, uh, it feels uh, like that you know. era is overshadowed by like Dark Side and The Wall. Yeah, I mean that that's that as my first introduction to Pink Floyd, I just wanted it to be more aggressive somehow, and it was just too laid back. Yeah. Um, but it took me. Uh, uh, yeah, friend f- played uh, "Bike" by Pink Floyd mm-hmm. uh, with Sid Barrett on vocals. Uh, I mean, now it's a while ago, but. Um, you know, I was I was in my late twenties, I think, at that point, and I was like, "This is Pink Floyd! Oh my God, what have been what have I been doing?" And uh, so, yeah, I've been I've been a fan for a while now, but um, I think that they were willing to or able to do these long, kind of improvisational pieces on their records. Um, I just like that. Yeah. So you know, we we all kind of dig that, so we we uh, went for it. Yeah. Well, it's mission accomplished, if I might say. It sounds great. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Silver Sea. We move on to Silver Sea. Follow the Silver Sea. Magical thing. What? What? what <laughs> what's the silver? Yeah, I guess sea? it's like a little. It's a little fantasy land uh, kind of trip. Uh, I, I think I wanted something kind of just a little bit more. After that heavy long instrumental, wanted to have something a little bit more kind of poppy and up and um, and fun sounding. And uh, so you know, again, it's a sort of adventure. You know, because Silver Sea and Experience are are connected. So it was. Uh, uh, you know, it's again, it's just sort of a trip. Like to me, it reminds me of, I feel like I'm in um, kind of Los Angeles, like in the 60s or something. It's got this like uh, sunset strip kind of quality about it. That's just kind of musically, that's what it makes m- me think of. And lyrically, it's just, it's kind of like telling some sort of vague story about, you know, people and having fun doing stuff mm-hmm. you know and uh it's more to create the mood for for the uh the back end of it which is uh experience i believe yeah. and um and i don't know the silver sea is is you know what is uh 
Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Heart Club Band. I don't know. You know, it's like a, it's a thing. It's like a, <laughs> a, it's a thing that you, you're on, and when you're in the Silver Sea, th- things might get weird. Okay, <laughs> that's, kind of, that's kind of my feeling about it. Uh, but the ocean. I grew up in Rockaway Beach, so the ocean is is like always big for me, and um, you know, I think it creates a mood on its own. Do you have fear of the ocean? Of course. Yeah, for sure. I mean, during hurricanes and, and uh, you know, even as a little kid, every little kid is told, be careful of the, you know, the riptide and, you know, you could drown and there's sharks. I mean, I saw Jaws as a kid. Yeah. So, yeah, the ocean is full of stuff that you can't see and, uh, you know, hidden dangers. So, um, you know, that's another thing that, I you know, I guess in talking about it now that it kind of evokes, you know, this peaceful massiveness and possibility and adventure yet it's also you know uh there's a lot that you you can't know or or control about it yeah yeah for sure experience to liberate you You were saying that the uh, Silver Sea is connected to the final song on the record, Experience. Can you expand, yeah. expand upon that in your in your discussion of experience for for us? Well, yeah, I'm just curious about that because it was almost like the song is it would be was kind of meant to be almost like one song actually, but we broke it up. Um, just that it's the sort of relief, you know, the, the after the the entire album, you know, which I think really plays as as one piece that the album although you know you can break it up but that there's this kind of restive time where you're kind of floating out and um you know it's it's again there's more improvisation on it and uh you know just wanted to give a feeling of calm at the end of it all right know. and does that word mean something to you i feel like the word experience was forever altered by Jimi hendrix <laughs> yeah well that's a, that, i didn't think of it that way but yeah for sure like that's definitely uh you know signaling something yeah it is right it's, I mean, yeah you were kind of immersed in that sort of world yeah for sure yeah i mean in in, in that yeah experience is is a, kind of a loaded word um but uh yeah i think you know that's definitely open to to me it makes me think of the ocean you know and just you know while the other song is called silver sea like to me the ending of it is actually feels more like sea like and the lyric is and the sea calls like which is just saying you know let's let's sail out to sea the album's kind of winding down <laughs> let's go off to the next adventure you know let's let's t- see where the wind takes us well, it's a really adventurous record, this uh, whatever which uh, you are. So, uh, Walter, I appreciate you going through every song. and uh, Yeah. I hope I hope this was somewhat helpful or, I don't know. Yeah, it was very interesting for, for me to talk about it because, uh, you know, it's I, I think it is. there's a lot of depth and meaning to it for me personally, and I think it, it's kind of embedded within the record. And, uh, you know, I'm happy for people to pick up on that. Yeah. Yeah. So this is your first full length as Dead Heavens, correct? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So what is the future? And you're doing all this touring. What does the future of this band look like? Are you already playing new songs on the road? What's happening? Yeah, we've got a bunch of new stuff. Uh, I think the future is wide open. We have lots of great new uh, riffs and ideas. And, uh, you know, hopefully we get through this touring. We have another we're playing in Japan in January. But, you know, we're going to hopefully buckle down and, and kind of, you know, really work some new material up but uh you know we're we're still i'm still digging this material that we we have and uh and we're you know having a great time but i'll be looking forward to to taking it to the next next phase yeah and uh, you mentioned before that cream and, and my bloody valentine were 
kind of in everyone's headphones or whatever, <laughs> and, yeah. and you were sharing space with the with that music. Is there something else that's registering with you? Just out of curiosity. Oh gosh, we listen to so much music; it's insane. You know, we're listening from salsa to kraut rock to uh, you know, we listen to a lot of '60s stuff and and contemporary and f- friends bands. And, oh, okay, okay. You know, we're we're very in the van, like we're listening to music the whole time, and and that's really the best is that uh, one of the things I love about our band is that we listen to music together, so we have a, a common you know frame of reference for the kind of stuff that we're we're listening to and you know all my bandmates are turning me on to different bands all the time and so it kind of gets me to be a little bit more hungry too and kind of share in that conversation so i i think you know you listen stylistically to the album we just made you know there's i think there's a pretty broad spectrum of sounds and and styles i think it definitely owes a debt to you know late 60s early 70s kind of rock and roll and i think that will continue but i i feel like it's very wide open for us. Okay, good. I'm looking forward to the salsa kraut rock uh, amalgam yeah. that you come up with. That's going to be good. Yeah, you know the salsa <laughs> has you know besides the rhythms, there's just like awesome melodies. Yeah, and and uh, and instrumentation. You know, like just wicked solos. I mean, there's it, there's a lot of you know. I mean, I'm listening to a lot of like 60s and 70s salsa and. Uh, you know, there's just there's so much music out there. It's just awesome. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Uh, before I let you go, uh, obviously, some big news is that Quicksand have a record coming out, and yes. uh, we were talking about how you go where the mood takes you right now in terms of musical styles. Mm-hmm. Can you talk about what, how Quicksand reconvened? Uh, is I mean, I, I, briefly, even I don't expect the full story, but can you talk a little bit about what, what spurred that on? Uh, well, we had played a, um, we kind of got to, got together for a surprise and, and played, uh, some songs at, uh, our revelation records, which was put out our first record. We played their anniversary show. And from that point out, you know, kind of led to, oh, maybe we, let's do a tour. It was so magical. And then we did the tour and we thought, well, that was really fun. We'd need to make an album if we wanted to do that again. And it just kind of was laying out there. And then, you know, we kind of put together stuff from jams and rehearsals and things that we had done and, you know, just kind of hanging out, getting coffee and, you know, hanging out at each other's houses. And we had amassed a bunch of kind of song ideas and, you know, we were still getting offers to play, but we didn't really want to keep playing the old stuff in the same way. It was getting kind of stale for us. And, uh, you know, it was always the idea that we would, you know, put aside the money from these shows and, and record a record at some point but we we kept it to ourselves because didn't really want to share that we wanted to make the record for ourselves and you know which is what we did and when it was finished then we we uh we have a manager and he kind of put it out some record labels and we, we got a lot of interest in epitaph were were the best fit and they've been great and um yeah we're getting great reception on the record and yeah, i'm really proud of it and so i'm i'm you know, for for coming back after you know, after so many years, it's like kind of tricky to pick up where you left off. But I'm I'm really happy with what we came up with. Well, were any of the new song ideas things that stemmed from the end of the band and its initial run? No, no, we wanted to be completely fresh. Right. So we we had some stuff that we had maybe had its origins in the last few years uh, because we we played in the last few years. We played some festivals last year, last summer. And in the rehearsals for that, we recorded our rehearsals and just the kind of, you know, warm ups before you start doing the songs. We would, um, and we played another festival the year before. So we've played like, I don't know, some handful of shows and whenever we would rehearse, we would just record, you know, us warming up. and, And that was, that was sort of where we found our sound and inspiration, but everything kind of came together a very in a very fresh way. You know, we rehearsed for a couple of weeks in December and recorded for a couple of weeks in, in January, and that was it. Was there anything about the the new approach or the reconvention, like just the reconvening? Did any, anything surprise you in particular about what came out with the, the four of you back together? Well, once we actually got it going, it was actually, you know, I remember just being more you know, we have basically a lot of chefs in the kitchen, but we were all just kind of work together and, and really 
you know, we basically, it was nice to see that we, we kind of all matured as people, you know, yeah. even though there's a still the, still the fire, the creative energy, we were able to, um, listen and, and, you know, respect and treat each other cool to where we were all like working for the same cause. And, and everyone was, you know, our standard was basically, are we all into this? Yeah. It was, it wasn't like, you know, we're doing this because so-and-so did that and now I got to do this. And, you know, there was no, there was no, uh, it wasn't fighting and, you know, sometimes fighting can be cool, but you know, it burnt us out. And this one, we were just kind of cooperating and, and being into it. And, um, you know, not that we didn't always, agree, that we always agreed, but the process was just a lot, just cooler. And that's why it happened so quickly. Yeah. Cause we were just, we were just working together. Well, it's exciting. And the record is called Interiors, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. When will it be out? Uh, it comes out November 10th. Oh, it's coming out soon. Okay. Yeah. I didn't, yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize yeah. how soon. It, and so uh, in terms of uh, fans, is there anything you want to say about uh, the record uh, ahead of time in terms of what people can expect? I mean, I know you you keep things close to the vest. You don't want to spoil people's interpretations. I just, uh, yeah. I'm just curious. Is there something you want to say to people who have been eagerly awaiting a new quicksand record? Yeah, buy it. Listen to it. It's good. <laughs> it's my favorite quicksand record. So, you know, that that's that's my endorsement. Okay, <laughs> that's fair. Uh where can people learn more about uh, Dead Heavens? Uh Dead Heavens we have we're deadheavens.com and um we are uh we're on Dynalone Records uh who put out the album and uh yeah, I mean we're on Instagram, you know, regular regular, regular ways. stuff. Okay. You're on yeah. you're on Twitter, you're on all the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is there a single song from this uh, Dead Heavens record that we can go out on to play for people right now? Uh, I love uh, Mumu Listen because it's just uh, it's just got that kind of spooky mellowness, and then the outro. I don't know. I just love it. I think it's a great song. Yeah, I agree. I, I think that's a good one to go out on. This is the Moon Will Listen, but not the Sun by Dead Heavens. Uh, Walter, this was really an honor and a pleasure, and, and thank you for your time, and best of luck going forward. Oh, thank you. It was great, great talking with you. Hold away for the winter time. Moonless was on your mind. I want to say. But you can't explain I won't find a way to ease your pain Yeah Run around on a circle
Creative Control once again acknowledges the support of FreshBooks, a cloud accounting software for small business owners with some truly thoughtful features that you'll love. Try it free for 30 days. Go to freshbooks.com slash creative control and in the how did you hear about us section, enter creative control. That's creative with a K and control with a K. Organize your money and get paid faster with FreshBooks. Stop worrying about what to make for dinner and start cooking instead. HelloFresh Canada will send a box of wholesome ingredients plus a simple to follow recipe right to your Canadian doorstep. Vegetarians, meat eaters, single people, families. There's something for almost everyone. Visit HelloFresh.ca for more info and menu options and use the promo code CREATIVE50 for 50% off your first order. Thanks again to Walter Schreifels for being on the 364th episode of Creative Control, which is part of the Antica Podcast Network and available on all your finer podcast platforms, all of them. If you can't find an episode that you're looking for or you want to learn more about me or sign up for my regularly scheduled newsletter, please visit my website, vishkana.com. You can like Creative Control on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, at vishcreative.com. Or follow me at Vishkana. Listen to a radio show version of Creative Control on Wednesdays at noon Eastern Standard Time around the world on CFRU.ca or on an actual radio at 93.3 FM if you're in or near Guelph. Also, please consider visiting patreon.com slash creative control to make a flexible monthly donation to keep this podcast going. I will send you some kind of gift in return for your pledge just to show you that I care. I have lots of stuff. I have t-shirts for the show, but I also have extra stuff i just need to get rid of it i'm gonna send it to you whether you like it or not i'm just gonna send you something it'll be nice I, it's not i have good stuff i just have too much of i have too much of the good stuff that's what they used to say about me in high school anyway patreon.com slash creative control this episode would not be possible without our sponsors i already mentioned hello fresh and uh, fresh books so you got them but what about pizza trocadero whom you can call for pickup or delivery at 519-829-2444 or check them out at trocaderoguelph.ca if you're if you're in guelph they'll bring you a pizza it's a fantastic pizza the bookshelf an independently owned bookstore bar music venue and movie theater located at 41 quebec street in guelph learn more about them at bookshelf.ca planet bean freshly roasted fair trade certified organic coffee for more info visit planetbeancoffee.com and granddad's donuts located at 574 james street north in hamilton ontario best donuts anywhere visit granddads.ca more information about them thank you again for listening to this episode please listen to other episodes subscribe to the show on all the podcast platforms download episodes download is just download episodes left and right just keep downloading episodes and uh telling your friends about the show because uh all of that uh, keeps it going so i'd like to thank you once again for listening and uh and all that stuff so you know I will talk to you very soon. I have nothing left to say now, but I will have more to say the next time we connect. And it'll be good. The stuff I have to... It might not be good. I can't guarantee anything. Bye. Goodbye for now.